Hello all and welcome to our chapter three discussion on the development of identity in children. I hope you all are having fabulous weeks and we're going to go ahead and just jump right into this. Of course, we have our objective slides. So after this chapter, you should be able to describe the role of peers in the development of a child's identity, explain the importance of play for identity, and discuss the role of culture in identity development. Uh, these three objectives are just to guide you while you're reading your text, watching the presentation, and doing your assignments for the week. After birth, it is theorized that the newborn believes that they are the same person as their primary giver, primary caregiver. They are one, if you will. Isn't that crazy? And it takes about four to seven months with the onset of object permanence that the infant then realizes that they are separate entity. They are not the same from their primary caregiver. This is the beginning of the infant's development of self and development of identity. They realize that they are an individual. As time goes on and the infant becomes a toddler and young child, they begin to label themselves and others into categories, and they tend to be pretty physical categories and or likes and dislikes. So for example, Miss Bella likes ballet and I like cupcakes. Miss Bella has blonde hair and I have brown hair. Miss Bella has blue eyes and I have brown eyes. Um, so as you can tell, very physical categories and or likes, dislikes. Um, this categorization helps the child form a sense of identity, realizing that they are an individual in the world, of the world, and with the world. Personal identity refers to who children believe themselves to be. As personal identity begins to develop, children will also form relationships through play and peer relations, which contribute to their emotional, social, and cognitive development. Theories of self generally agree that an early childhood program can foster children's self-esteem and build the foundation for future relationships with others. As an early childhood educator, you get to foster children's identities. You get to be there while they're finding out themselves and creating that foundation for their identity. Isn't that so cool? The text places a big emphasis on social identity, which refers to ways in which children feel they are or would like to be the same as others, typically through identification with family and or peer culture. Social identity begins with family and culture and can be cultivated in the classroom, especially through play. As children develop their identity, they're influenced by interactions and relationships with others. Friendship is a value to children as they help each other understand the world in which they live. Children with friends have better social skills and fewer adjustment problems as friends provide social support and can protect against the difficulties of starting school, victimization, and bullying, and all the other negatives that come with school, unfortunately. Having friends is an important resource for developing identities. Cultural identity is the identity or feeling of belonging to a group. It is part of a person's self, like self concept, self, ugh, what's the word, perception, and is related to nationality, ethnicity, religion, social class, generation, region, and any other social group or cohort, cohort that has its own distinct culture. In this way, cultural identity is both a characteristic of the individual but also of the culturally identical group of members sharing the same cultural identity or upbringing. I wanted to include this side so you can visually see what the foundations for identity are. These foundations include family, peers, culture, play, educational environment, and the formation of self. Education, including early childhood education, is an important area of culture. Does school help enable and empower young people to develop their own authentic meaning in life, which should also entail becoming aware of one's social reality and of adopting a critical attitude towards existing structures in society? Or is it more inclined to further the development of those qualifications which are more in line with that which is socially acceptable? Schools may be in inherently inequitable when those in power believe their understanding of the world is the only legitimate one. 
An example of this would be holidays at schools. Um, let's say a school chooses to celebrate Christmas because they believe that that is the one true and only holiday around that time of year. Disregarding other celebrations such as Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, etc. How do you think students who do not celebrate Christmas feel? Would that be an inclusive and invite invite? Would that be an inclusive and inviting environment for them? Try saying that five times fast. It becomes the dominant culture of the school, alienating and excluding those in minority groups, which can lead to a loss of self-esteem, challenges in being and challenges in being successful in the educational environment. Play is crucial. Children try to gain a sense of self-identity of their own when they associate with other people around them, which is typically done via play at that age when we're talking early childhood. Dramatic play in particular, which is when children dress up and pretend to be something or someone, is a vital tool in identity development, providing children with the opportunity to try on many different hats, if you will, and be different people. Play contributes to children's emotional development, and since play requires use of multiple motor or mental functions, children develop various skills as well. Play-based learning aids children in developing moral and social skills and also enhan enhances human capacity to respond to adversity and cope with stressors of everyday life. In play, we build a repertoire of adaptive, flexible responses to unexpected events in an environment separated from real consequences of those events. Playfulness helps us maintain social and emotional equilibrium in times of rapid change and stress. Stress. Through play, we experience flow, a feeling of being taken to another place out of time where we have control over the environment. For the child, play and playing is fundamentally about agency, power, and control. In play, children actively explore their own social and physical power in relations to the world and to other children. As each child participates with other children in their social context of play, exploring and testing and making decision, decisions at the edges of their own possibility, they come to understand what it means to be in control and what it means to be out of control. When left to control their own play, they explore what it means to exert their own power over others and take chances and physical risks. The risks that they take are calculated risks that can be supported by an early childhood professional such as yourself. Understanding the need for risk-taking is important for development during the early years and beyond. Through safe risk-taking, children learn their physical, mental, and emotional boundaries, contributing to their formation of self. Overall, play helps children learn to roll with the punches of everyday life and to experience the ongoing social and emotional balancing of self that is fundamental to successful participation in social life. Identity is formed through direct relation to the people that we interact with, our physical and temporal environment, and the culture that we are a part of from the beginning. We can examine the social and cultural systems that surround us to see how the various dimensions are involved with our self-identity. In this chapter, we examined how the early childhood environment plays a role in the formation of children's identity development. The chapter also examined the role of the teacher in children's children's identity development, as well as how teachers' identity development, both personal and professional, contribute to the early childhood environment. For now, that's a wrap. I hope you all have a wonderful weeks. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to reach out. Other than that, have a great week and I will see you next week.